Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. My name is Kelly. I am an oncology and lymphedema specialist. In a recent video, I shared about new and exciting findings on lymphatic drainage and how this may change the traditional way that we have taught how to do lymphatic drainage. This research is being done by the ALERT program in Australia and it very well may change the way we treat lymphedema. To see my explanation of this in depth, I would highly encourage you to go check out that video, which I will link up above and also down below. And I'll also link alerts information to learn more in depth below. But in this video, I will be doing a lymphatic drainage routine for moderate to severe arm lymphedema or lymphatic dysfunction that someone can follow along with based on this new information. If you'd like a printout with steps and a diagram, you can find one on my website, which I'll link above in the description box down below. Now, this routine is different than the other videos of traditional lymphatic drainage that I have on my channel. And know that this is a modified way that is not yet being taught by lymphedema certification schools to the masses yet. So please continue to work with your lymphedema therapist for personalized guidance. If you want a video of traditional lymphatic drainage or MLD, check out my playlist full of options, which I'll link down below. Before I begin, I wanna take a second and give a massive thank you to the ALERT program, not only for their dedication to this research and passion to improve lymphedema treatment, but also thank you for providing me with slides and graphics for this video series to be able to share with you all. Please see the description box down below again for links to the ALERT program content and their publications. Now, I explained this more in depth in the video I mentioned prior, but if we take a quick look at the summary view, you can see here the percentage of individuals that had lymph fluid drain to each area or region of lymph nodes, with a majority having fluid moving still to the lymph nodes remaining on the side of surgery and up to the clavicle or collarbone area, and minimal amount to the other armpit across the body, and no one had fluid moving to the groin. So we want to have a modified routine that follows this. So go ahead and follow along for a possible modification routine so that someone can try. So the first thing we still want to do is our deep breathing. So we're going to take our hands, put them in the upper quadrant of your tummy, gently pressing inward. You want to take a breath in, expanding your belly into your hand, but make sure you keep that resistance. So breath in and out. Move over to the other upper quadrant, breath in and out. Go down lower into your belly, breath in and out. And one more in the lower quadrant, breath in and out. Good. Next, we want to stimulate all of the lymph nodes still to start. So what we're going to do is we'll put our hands right around our collar, collarbone or clavicle, right at the base. You can do both at the same time. You can do one at a time, whatever works for you. But using your whole hand, doing gentle circles, we'll do eight to 10 circles in this area. Make sure you're directly on the skin. You don't have to press really hard or really deep. We don't want to also just use our little fingertips. We want to get as much surface area as possible to get those lymph nodes. Then we want to also make sure that we stimulate the lymph nodes right below the ear. So what I like to do is take my fingers, split them into two, and then on either side of the ear, like this, you're going to do nice big circles on either side. Direction does not matter. Eight to 10 to stimulate those lymph nodes. Then we also want to stimulate the lymph nodes in the armpit area. So we'll take our hand, place it directly in the armpit. You can start on either side because we're going to do both. And we'll do eight to 10 circles in this arm. And then when you're done, we'll go ahead and do the same thing on our side. You can spend a little bit more time on the side that you had lymph nodes removed. Based on this research, we know a lot of fluid a lot of people have flow that moves still to this area. We want to make sure that we're really stimulating those lymph nodes. 
because that seems to be where the bulk of it still goes, the fluid goes. We'll still go ahead and simulate the other side if you haven't already. Doing eight to 10 circles. Again, direction doesn't necessarily matter. Nice and gentle. Now you also can still stimulate the groin lymph nodes just to make sure you're stimulating everything in the body. But again, in this research, no one had fluid moving down to that area. So if we wanna modify and shorten it, we're gonna take that out. And then we're gonna move on to the upper body. So I will have separate videos for the chest and breast swelling. We're gonna be focusing mostly on the arm, but we're still gonna do a little bit of the chest and the trunk. So we're gonna be focusing and saying that this side or my right side has the swelling. And so I'm gonna be working away from that side and most of it still goes to this lymph node but if we have this upper chest area that's close to the collarbone or clavicle let's go that direction let's move what fluids near that to those healthy lymph nodes we'll do a few strokes there so you're moving from the side of surgery your lymph nodes removed away from it to the collarbone or clavicle there are also some lymph nodes right in the midline around the sternum area that show that also can take some fluid. So if you wanna go right on the inside of the chest, you can move some fluid there. And you can move a little bit of fluid across to the other side as well. We just won't spend as much time doing that. You wanna make sure you're doing this directly on the skin. If you can, that's the best, really the most optimal way to be doing lymphatic drainage is on the skin directly. And then we're also gonna spend time, instead of working downwards, we're just gonna stimulate the fluid to move into those lymph nodes in that area. Even with moderate to severe swelling, you can see that a lot of fluid still goes to these lymph nodes in this area. And so we're gonna still, instead of going downwards, we're gonna just stimulate around that region, spending a little bit more time here compared to moving the fluid across. And after we spend some time there, you can spend as much time as you need to, depending on where your swelling is, we're gonna to start to move into the arm. So we're gonna start up on the shoulder and we're gonna move up and over the shoulder, either to the lymph nodes in the armpit or to the collarbone or clavicle. Three to five in each area, make sure you reach on the back. Now the research shows that really no, not many people had fluid moving to the lymph nodes in the back, so we're not gonna spend time doing that. We're gonna keep right in the front and after we've done the shoulder, we're gonna to move to the upper arm. So elbow to the shoulder, full hand. We're gonna do slow and firm strokes. I explained this in the other video, but that's the best thing for backed up fluid. We call dermal backflow is slow and firm. We always use the tot nice and light and quick. That's great for lymphatic vessels, but if you have a backed up or area that's pooling with fluid, Go ahead and slow down a little bit and give a little bit more pressure. You don't have to give deep. Make sure that you get on the inside of the arm as well as the outside. So three to four kind of in each area of the arm. And then make sure you get around the back. And after you've spent time doing three to four strokes on each area of that upper arm, we're gonna go around to the elbow. So working around that bone some of the fluid likes to sit into those crevices. You might have to use your fingers a little bit more to kind of get into those corners. And then we can also work in the front of the elbow. There's some lymph nodes right there. Stimulate those to help. And after we've done a few strokes there, we're gonna work into the lower arm. So we're gonna work from wrist to elbow, full hand, slow and firm. Now I like to have my arm up so gravity can help. You can be laying down, you can be sitting, your arm can be rested, whatever ends up working for someone for a position for comfort. But I like to have the arm up just to help with gravity a little bit. So again, three to four on each side of the arm. So working on that side. If you have a little bit more fluid or more congestion in a certain area, spend more time there. That's not wrong and this is all about finding a modification to individualize how to do lymphatic drainage. We're still doing the right techniques and the right sequencing, but someone might need to spend more time in one area than another person, and that's important. But we make sure that we look at what each person needs. So working around the back to finish it off, make sure you're working in each area. And then after we finish that lower arm, we're gonna go into the hand and the fingers. So the back of them, we use the whole hand. 
You can do the whole fingers and the hand at the same time. Some people like to have a lot of fluid that well, let fluid likes to sit in between the tendons there. So sometimes I'll end up using my fingers to work in between the tendons if that fluid's just really stubborn. Because sometimes a flat hand just not going to dig into those corners. So feel free to use a little bit more fingers on this one versus the whole hand. Make sure that you kind of work around that thumb area that likes to hold a lot of fluid for some individuals. And then move on to the fingers. You can do the whole hand as well, or you're welcome to do one finger at a time if you tend to have more swelling in certain fingers. Again, we'll spend time moving that fluid down and out of the area. Now that we've moved all the way down the arm, we're gonna reverse and move our way, or make our way back up. So we're gonna go back to the hand a little bit. And then we're going to go back to the arm. So wrist to the elbow. Slow and firm, but not deep. Good. Make sure you get the other sides. A lot of people tend to have fluid right on that upper forearm. So go ahead and spend more time if that's you. And maybe someone has fibrosis, maybe it's thicker, it's harder, it's starting to get hard. Sometimes we'll stop and just start to massage kind of kneading dough right where those areas that you might have fibrosis. This is a great time to spend a minute or two and maybe that's your focus. Spending your time there rather than just doing the strokes. Make this what you need. And then we're gonna work back around the elbow when you're ready, kind of working around that bone. Make sure that you get on the inside of the elbow too. And then after that, we're gonna go back to the upper arm. So working our way up. Again, if you notice a thicker area, a firmer area, harder area, spend more time there. Maybe you stop and do kind of your kneading of the dough to help soften the fibrosis and then start to move the fluid again. You want to make sure you spend the time for what you need and then we'll take out the areas and the the pieces of the the routine that you may not need as much we want to make this efficient so that you can be more consistent and effective make sure you get on the back side of the arm make sure you feel back there and if you need to rest your arm on something that's fine and then after we've done all sides of the arm we're gonna go back up to the shoulder, kind of working up and over the shoulder, working more towards the front, not the back. And you can kind of work towards the lymph nodes in the armpit, so underneath, working towards the armpit. Or working up towards the collarbone or clavicle. And then when you finish with the arm and you feel like you're ready, you can start to work some of that fluid towards the collarbone. And you might want to work it across to the chest, to that midline area where there's some lymph nodes, some people have fluid moving there. And yeah, if you have the time, move all the way across. A small percentage still has fluid moving to this area and that might be you. So if you have the time, go ahead and move it. If you don't, I would cut out there and just focus on the lymph nodes on that side. So you can see the one thing that's going to be different about this from the traditional videos that I have on my channel is that we're not going to work down to the groin. We have seen in the research that no one has fluid moving down there from at least what they can see in their smaller research. So we're going to modify and take that out and focus on what we do know. So spend the time you need, stimulate the lymph nodes on that side, work across if you have extra time. And then when you're ready and you feel like you've moved what you need to move, we're gonna finish with a four more deep breaths. So we're gonna put our hand back on our belly in the upper corner, take a nice big breath in into your hands, and out. Move your hands over, breath in, and out. Move your hands down lower, breath in, and out. 
Last corner, breath in and out. So that's one kind of modification routine that someone can do for lymphatic drainage based on the ALERT program's findings. Again, work with your certified lymphedema therapist to find what works best for you. Everyone should have an individualized program for their own needs. If you just have mild lymphedema, I have a separate video on this. This was more for moderate to severe, so you can check that out on my channel. Again, if you want traditional lymphatic drainage, I have plenty of videos on my channel of that as well. I hope you all found this video helpful. Again, I wanna say thank you to the ALERT program for providing not only this research and dedicating a lot of time to this uh, research and findings, but also for providing me some of the slides and information for this video to share with you all. I hope to see you all in the next video. Thanks everyone.